<laughs> oh lordy what's up sons it's blind rod with sound of tech once again and i got another talking head video today we're going to be talking about whether you should start mining cryptocurrency in 2021 or if you're better served going ahead and just investing in cryptocurrency in 2021 this is a question that I asked on Twitter, basically what you guys want me to talk about next in the next talking head video. We have more how to's coming to the channel. Those I do on the weekends. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So stay tuned for those this weekend. I will be trying to get out some more talking head videos next week. I would prefer to get one a day for the weekdays. And I will be asking what topics you would like me to discuss in those talking head videos here on YouTube. Additionally, if you guys are finally getting into mining heavily with a home farm, you should definitely check out my affiliate link for HiveOS in the description. If you are starting to trade just now and barely getting into cryptocurrency, check out the affiliate link for crypto.com to get an extra $25 when signing up. And that is all the plugs I have. These are all basically self created affiliate links that I get small kickbacks on. It's not much, but it's definitely helpful. So I appreciate it very much if you use them. I'm working on an affiliate link for Yubico as well, which are the keys. We have them right here, as well as a review video on how to use them. Boom, highly recommend them for security. And hopefully we'll be getting an affiliate link for that down there for you guys as well. As far as VPNs and other securities, we will, or security features or security items, we will be going over that in another video. It may be a talking head video first and then with some individual how to's on each individual application or piece of hardware that has to do with security. But back to the question for today, if you're just now getting into cryptocurrency in 2021 or you've been out for a little bit and you're getting back in, should you get back into cryptocurrency mining or should you just invest, meaning just buy the cryptocurrency? Now, this question can get a little difficult because you need to take into account the different types of mining you could get into as well as the different types of investing or buying crypto now first of all before we even get into this i'm not a financial advisor and all thoughts and opinions are my own typically things that i am doing myself in this space so without further ado what is cryptocurrency mining we have a video on this channel that you can go check out if you aren't clear on it be sure to click that and head on over there, get a good idea of what cryptocurrency mining is, and then come back here. Now, the next thing we need to talk about is the availability of cryptos for mining versus the availability of cryptos for buying. And really the, that's an important distinction to make because there are a vast amount of cryptocurrencies on the market and there are a lot more for non-miners because there are coins that are proof of stake which if you've watched the what is cryptocurrency mining video you should have an okay idea on what proof of stake is Woo. all right so now that you guys understand that you have more investment opportunities if you're just buying cryptocurrency and less opportunities if you're mining cryptocurrency let's talk about the markets a little bit and how that functions now a lot of people like to use a site called what to mine to determine what they are going to get in revenue when mining with cryptocurrency this is not something you can depend on cryptocurrency mining is never a guarantee the markets are always shifting the difficulty of the networks are always shifting and you will never be able to tell how many transactions you're going to get and how many how many blocks are going to be found or even uh, for example the amount of fees that are being paid on any particular block for any particular day so if you're going to be taking a look at investing into cryptocurrency mining you need to take into account that there the market shifts so much that you're not going to be able to actually calculate your guaranteed return on investment that being said you have an investment there that has physical products so let's talk about assets right what is an asset? Well, where I learned about assets was basically for, I'm, I'm not super smart. I learned from a book uh, called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And one of the basics in that book that it, that it discusses when we're talking about assets are things that generate revenue, okay? So one of the things that they like to talk about in Rich Dad, Poor Dad a lot is basically 
the idea of buying things that generate revenue and not so much buying things that just increase in value. This is a concept that has served a lot of people very well. The idea is you, if you bought a home, for example, you would rent that home out to pay the mortgage. You wouldn't necessarily live in that home because otherwise you aren't generating revenue with that home. That's just a, a basic idea, right? And the same thing goes with cars, vehicles, so on and so forth. Basically, if it's a static sort of thing that's not generating revenue, then it's not an asset. So you need to look at that when you're looking at cryptocurrency, at least that's something I look at, right? Once again, not financial advice, but that's a key difference between mining cryptocurrency, right? And just investing in cryptocurrency outside of a few different options that we are gonna go over when investing in cryptocurrency. So if your goal is to follow that sort of principle, then mining does at that point make more sense. Why? Because you own an asset, a GPU in this case, a graphics card that is generating you revenue, right? Over time. So it's not relying on the price of the coin going up necessarily. It's still going to generate revenue, right? Whether that revenue covers its costs or not is another topic, right? And that's a risk that you take with mining, which is if it doesn't generate enough to cover power costs and you don't have enough saved up to cover those power costs, then you are going to be in the hole and that's going to be you know, a problem. But at least at the very least, if that does become a thing, you have an asset that you can still sell off, right? So imagine you had a home, right? That, think of the GPU as a home that you're renting out to somebody. And then basically the economy dives, people can't afford to rent, maybe a higher end home that you're renting out and you aren't able to rent it out anymore. Well, you still do technically have the option to sell off that piece of property. And just like that piece of property, you still have the GPU or that asset to sell off. You aren't gonna make all your money back, right? In most cases, but you have something there that you can sell back off. As opposed to that, if we're talking about just buying cryptocurrency, right? So let's say I go in and I just buy some Bitcoin. If the price of Bitcoin goes down, I've only lost money, right? At that point, I'm not generating revenue, so I don't have any power costs to cover, which is good, but I also don't have any control over that asset anymore. Cause it's not, I mean, like technically, like if we're thinking in those terms, it's not even an asset, it's just increasing or decreasing in value. So you're purely dependent on the market to determine what your success is going to be. You can't switch algorithms and switch coins. You could swap coins, but you've already taken a loss on that coin, right? So if I have Bitcoin and I'm like, oh shoot, Ethereum's going up, but Bitcoin went down and you swap to Ethereum, well, you've already lost all that value. And there's a lot of good trading financial channels that can help you like reduce that risk. I'm not one of them. I'm a mining channel. Another hard part for me on this topic and why it's just a talking head topic with no uh, financial advice per se is because uh, I'm a technical guy. The reason I'm into crypto, mining cryptocurrency is I'm a technical guy. I like computers. I really like graphics cards. I like to play with them. I like to tinker with them. So that for me just fits right into like what I'm already doing with my life, which is another point to bring up when we're talking about mining. If you're not really, really into computers and you're not really, really into graphics cards, like let's say, or just technology, and command line interfaces and so on, mining is probably on the grand, on a big scale, is probably not gonna be your thing, right? You're not gonna have that love and passion for it. And it's the same thing with like investing in crypto. Like if you're not really, really into cryptocurrency, investing in cryptocurrency is probably not gonna be that, that big of a deal for you. It's the same thing when people talk about stocks and investing in stocks. And there's a few different theories on there, but you typically will be more successful investing in stocks that in industries that you know, right? So 
if you know a lot about that industry, then you're gonna do better because you're gonna be able to kind of feel out that portion of the market, right? And the same thing goes here. If we're talking about mining cryptocurrency versus you know buying cryptocurrency, if you're really into cryptocurrency and that's it, and you're not really into like computers and, and operating systems and dare I say Linux, probably shouldn't be into mining, right? That's a big deal. But you know, if you are, then it's gonna be great because not only are you like doing something that you want, but you also have an asset that you can sell off at the end of it. And you get to just have a little fun, which at the end of the day is always good. And it's fun having graphics cards. I like playing video games. I can just go swap out what graphics card I want to play video games for the night. Sure, I'm not mining on that card, but you know, you gotta have a little fun here and there. Anyways, so another thing that we gotta talk about is you there are cryptocurrencies that are assets in the spirit of rich dad poor dad right so if we're going to talk about that then we'll talk about like the idea of cryptocurrency investments that generate revenue so examples of this would be uniswap honey swap that sort of deal decentralized finance and what decentralized finance does is it takes one token and another token you lock out 50% of each, right? Matching values. And then when transactions happen on the network, you receive a portion of the fee. And that portion of the fee is also dependent on how much of those tokens you control on the chain, so on and so forth. But that would be a revenue generating investment, meaning that you can still adhere to basically the principles of like generating revenue by uh, investing strategically. Another version of this is going to be staking. So there are coins where you can stake into and basically you lock up a piece of that crypto once again, and that's gonna be a coin, not a token. So decentralized finance, think of tokens. For a coin, think staking. And staking is different, it's just gonna be the one coin. You lock that up and depending on the percentage of the network that you have locked up, you get a portion of the fees for that. Once again, generating revenue, good thing. The last one is gonna be master nodes, which is similar to staking, except it does run on a server, but you can use a VPS, what's known as a virtual private server to enable these master nodes. And you would have something like Vulture, which I'll leave a referral link to down below, as well as DigitalOcean. And you can use a, a service like that to go ahead and spin up a master node. And then you lock up the coins. We've done how to videos on these as well. If there's a specific coin you like to see on how to set up a master node, let me know in the comment section below. Nothing too expensive yet, right? I wish I could do that, that dash master node for y'all, but not at this point. Anyways, because <laughs> that would be amazing. But you would lock that up, right? And then you would be able to essentially at that point get even it's it, the rewards are higher than just staking for masternodes typically and then you'll get a revenue generating investment on masternodes now the thing with masternodes is it's going to be somewhere between cryptocurrency mining and the other forms like staking or or the uh swapping right or liquidity adding liquidity on like a uniswap or whatever and the difference there is like it's gonna be somewhere in between there as far as computer savviness and knowledge. You're gonna to need to be able to work Linux command line. You're gonna to need to understand what you're doing when you're saving your private keys and all that, which can be very stressful, but you will learn a lot, which is good. And once up and running, you can run backups for like three bucks a month on whatever. So that's another thing you have to factor in. So you're, you're cost there is going to be renting out that virtual private server plus renting out the backups which i would highly recommend doing and at that point you know you're probably about eight bucks a month so whatever master node you're running in some cases you can run up to three different master nodes on a five dollar vps just depending on how good you are at, at linux right um and in that case and that's got to do with ports and all that sort of stuff networking da 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 uh, you can though do pretty well with masternodes. I do want to just like clarify that that leans more towards tech savviness. If you're not really into that, you're probably going to want to just buy and use something like decentralized finance or staking. 
So at the end of the day though, should you get into cryptocurrency mining or just buy and invest in cryptocurrency right now? And for that, I have pulled up some graphics card options over here for you to take a look at. And as you can see, there's not much here. So what you all you have on Newegg right now is an RX 570 for $204 and a 5500 XT for 229. Now out of these two cards, if I'm going to buy a card, personally I'm going to buy the 5500 XT. It's a newer card, it'll resell better and it's actually at list price as opposed to the 570 which is not at list price, right? These have gone up. So they're at 204 even the new egg price is increased here. Also, you have to keep into account that these are not free shipping options from new egg now either. Now, if you go over to Amazon and start looking for the same thing, the only option you have are 570s and they're significantly overpriced at $270 for one option and $299 for the other option. Keeping in mind that before the crypto boom, these 570s, especially four gigs, which no longer really work on Ethereum, uh, we're running for like 50 to 75 bucks a pop as people were getting rid of their farms. You also need to take into account, right, that you are essentially overpaying for this asset. So if somebody came up to you, right, and you had just bought, let's say, one Bitcoin for $40,000 on, what was it, Sunday of last weekend or whatever, and then Monday came around, and it dipped to 30,000 and somebody offered you, you know, 30,000 for it, you're not going to want to sell it right then. You'd be taking a loss. So I, I consider these sorts of prices taking a loss. And I can't really tell you that GPU mining is a great idea right now if you aren't already invested. So your goal is going to be right now, if you want to get into cryptocurrency mining, to find at least deals like this 5500 XT for list price, right? And I don't think you're gonna find a lot of them. You need to get on as many lists as you can. If you really, really are gonna spin up a big farm and you have already had that planned out, obviously you're gonna be going through distributors. That's gonna be a, a huge difference uh, between like hobby mining or individual home mining. And of course, like, I guess starting a business because that's a different topic for a different video. But right now, my opinion is you really probably can't get into cryptocurrency mining right now. There are the ASICs. They're going to be sold out everywhere forever too. It's going to be really hard. You can pre-order them. And then if you're pre-ordering, you're waiting all those months, not mining, and you've already sunk all that money into pre-ordering something that you can't get and can't put to work as an asset. It's just not, it's, it, it, it's not a very smart time to buy. The smart time to buy was last year when you could get GPUs at retail. And then if you can right now, obviously just stay on the now in stock list, try to buy them when they're coming in and just make sure that you already have like a mining motherboard, mining, mining power supply and mining frame ready to go to just start slapping them in. You can start putting one by one by one in. On the last cycle, right before the last halving, of Bitcoin back in like 2016. Uh, I got in late personally, so this is how I had to do it, which was I bought one RX 470 and I found it for retail. And then I finally found a Titan that I was on a list for that I had on retail. And I I had maybe 20 cards by the by the end of it, right? And and that that was just kind of how it went. You 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 aren't gonna be able to spin up those big farms right now. So your options are, like I said, really start looking into staking, uh, really start looking into master nodes. If you're more on the technical side, do your research on those and maybe look into DeFi, of course, decentralized finance and looking at staking into those, keeping in mind that all of those are going to be fee heavy. Uh, but you know, once you get yourself in the position that where you're reaping the rewards of the fees and not paying the fees, then it's kind of a mute point. Now, the same thing goes with mining. Now, at the end of the day, is mining better or is, or is investing better? If you're just going to buy and hold, I wouldn't even suggest buying crypto at all. Personally, I wouldn't because you're not generating a revenue, A, 
And B, if the coin goes down, you got nothing. You got nothing at that point. Now, one of the things I found hilarious was uh, just recently on Monday, when we had the big dip and Bitcoin, I think went all the way back down to like 30K or something like that. People were dumping Ethereum and trying to get all of their, uh, their decentralized finance tokens out. Well, the miners did great. They were making more money than ever, even at the lower prices. So you do protect yourself investment wise because whenever the transactions go up on the network, mining makes more money right and generates more revenue so while the mar market's going down you're generating just more of the revenue off of everybody dumping all of their tokens and all of their coins so that's something to keep in mind it's pretty brilliant so anyways i'll see you next tuesday